So you want to build a pressure pump for a two-stroke carburetor. Well, the way I found to do it, least expensive, this here is a uh, football pump with the needle. This here is an air conditioner uh, vacuum check valve and a piece of hose right here. I got this vacuum T from AutoZone, which would go here. I got another piece of vacuum hose. Had to go to Home Depot and get a, a union, and this is a quarter-inch barb. Now, depending on the gauge, you know, you don't need a big gauge. You don't need something that goes up to a hundred. You want something small. Depending on the gauge, thread-wise, that you find, that's right here, it depends on what you're going to use here to hook into this. And then from that, you know, on these little two-strokes, you got this little dinky hose, and then you got the one that's a little bit bigger. So with this barb, it works both ways. So let me put this together, and I'll show you how it works. Here's my setup. You got the pump, a Wilson pump. You got the needle for the football or basketball. You got that check valve for the air conditioner, vacuum hose. You got the T that goes off into our pressure gauge. And then the other one I got it clamped off. So let's see if I can do this with one hand. Now when you do this, they all say, well, the carburetor shouldn't be more than 10 PSI. Now, for all I'm looking for is to make sure we got no internal leaks. So right now, before I do any checks on any of these two-stroke carbs, I'm gonna make sure my baby's working good. And it appears to be working good. So, now that I know we're not losing any pressure, there because it's holding pretty good now this valve here if your pump has let's say some it leaks a little bit this air conditioner check valve is what's going to save you from any gases going not gases air pressure going back out so right now we're holding and of course i teflon taped everything so let me unhook this hold on so sorry about that I got this Walbro carburetor from Amantis. This one that I was working on earlier. Let me put it in our water. Well, right now my pressure's holding. But let's put it in the water. And don't forget, you know, you might have an air pocket that's got to settle. And let's see how this is doing. Even though I replaced that Mantis carburetor with a, a Zama for a newer year, you know, my gauge is holding. This setup cost me probably around 20 bucks, but some of the parts I had here. Uh, a good side note is, whenever you're working on a two-stroke and you suspect flooding, these pinch-off tires, you know, if you pinch off the fuel going to the carburetor and then start it and it miraculously starts and, uh, and it idles for a little bit, then it dives on you, that's a sign of flooding. And uh, with your vacuum gauge is one way you can check. So let me uh, show you the parts that I got. These two I got from uh, Home Depot because I was using a quarter inch gauge. This is a vacuum T with very small sizes and up to like 3 eighths, which gives you a good variety because you're gonna need to buy some vacuum hose automotive. Now the gauge, don't buy something that's for water. You gotta get something that's either fuel or uh, oil because you're dealing with uh, the gas oil residues in the carburetor that may come back into the gauge and mess up the, uh, the, the reading device in there. So I hope this helps someone out there in YouTube land. And uh, if I got any more ideas, oh, this was this was my original one. 
but I don't want to sh share with you about these parts because they'll be hard for you to find and uh, this setup would be much easier for you to find in uh, your local hardware store and uh, if you're really and it's not bad she's not not really dropping I mean uh, if you're uh, you want to put something like this together so that's my setup